Hey there, Psych 370 students, and welcome to another video lecture for week seven. In my previous video lecture, I said a few introductory things about operant conditioning, right? So I talked about the similarities and the differences between it and classical conditioning. I also talked about the law of effect, which was originally formulated by a psychologist named Edward Thorndike. So remember, with operant conditioning, we're talking about how a behavior changes, how the frequency or the probability of that behavior changes based on the consequences that follow it. So behaviors that produce desirable effects tend to get repeated, and behaviors that don't produce desirable effects tend not to get repeated. That is the law of effect in a nutshell, right? So consequences matter. I mean, what happens after you do something definitely has an effect on whether or not you do that thing again in the future. But people and animals can obviously experience different types of consequences. So sometimes you might increase the frequency of a behavior because it results in the addition of something that you want. Other times you might increase the frequency of a behavior because it results in the subtraction or the prevention of something that you don't want. And of course, a behavior can also decrease in frequency. It can get punished for similar reasons. So guys, before we get into any more detail, as far as operant conditioning is concerned, I think this is a good time for us to cover the four basic forms that it can take. So that's what I'll be doing in this video lecture. This is another excerpt from a Zoom class from last year, just like your last video lecture was. And in it, I'm gonna be talking about what we call positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, and negative punishment. Now, I imagine this stuff is probably review for most of you guys. You probably covered this stuff in intro, but students get these terms mixed up often enough that I think it's a good idea to go through them with you. So guys, the way to keep these four types of operant conditioning straight is to remember that a behavior can have one of two basic consequences, okay? It can either cause something that wasn't there before to get added, or it can cause something that was there before or that would have been there to get subtracted, right? And then that consequence can have one of two basic effects on the animal's behavior. It can strengthen that behavior or it can weaken it. And so if you cross those two dimensions with each other, then you get those four basic types of operant conditioning. So first of all, the consequence itself can be positive or negative, right? If it's positive, then that means the behavior produced the addition of something. And if it's negative, that means the behavior caused something to get subtracted or prevented. So you should think of the positive and negative parts here as plus and minus, okay? Addition and subtraction, not necessarily good and bad, right? That's what the positive and negative parts represent. And if that consequence strengthens the behavior, if it makes that behavior more likely to occur again, then we call that reinforcement, right? Say the consequence has reinforced the behavior, made it more likely to recur. And if the consequence weakens the behavior, if it makes that behavior less likely to occur again in the future, then we call that punishment, right? We'd say the behavior has been punished by that consequence. So reinforcement always involves a behavior getting stronger, right? Reinforcement always involves a behavior becoming more frequent, more likely to occur again in the future. And punishment always involves the opposite. Punishment always involves a behavior getting weaker becoming less frequent, less likely to get repeated, okay? But of course, sometimes a behavior gets reinforced because it results in the addition of something good, right? Something the animal wants. So we call that positive reinforcement. Remember, positive in this context means that something has been added, right? So the example that I gave you earlier about my son saying please and then getting a cookie, that would be positive reinforcement, right? Because the behavior saying please produced the addition of the cookie, that's what makes it positive, right? Or other times a behavior can still get reinforced. It can still increase in frequency, but not because it results in something good being added, but rather because it results in something bad, something aversive getting subtracted were prevented, okay? So we call that negative reinforcement, 
Yeah. So in other words, negative reinforcement is basically reinforcement by subtraction. Okay, it's where behavior gets stronger, it gets reinforced because it allows the person or the animal to avoid or to escape from something they find aversive. So for example, if I start my car before I put my seatbelt on, then my car makes this sort of beeping sound that I find annoying. I find that sound aversive. I'd rather not hear it, right? And as soon as I fasten my seatbelt, the beeping sound stops, right? So the consequence of that behavior, the consequence of me putting my seatbelt on is negative, right? Because the beeping sound gets subtracted, right? That stimulus gets removed. That's what makes it negative. And since that's a consequence that I like, since I prefer not to hear the sound over hearing it, then that behavior of me putting my seatbelt on is gonna become more frequent, right? It's gonna get reinforced by the subtraction of this aversive stimulus. So negative reinforcement, okay? And of course, just like reinforcement can be positive or negative, so can punishment, right? So positive punishment is where a behavior decreases in frequency because it results in the addition of something bad. That's positive punishment, right? So in positive punishment, again, the behavior gets weaker, becomes less likely to occur again in the future because that behavior produces something the animal doesn't want, right? like say a painful stimulus, spanking would be the, the, the most obvious example I could probably give you of positive punishment, or at least an attempt at positive punishment. And negative punishment is where, again, the behavior still decreases. We're still talking about punishment, but it decreases because it results in the subtraction or the prevention of something good, something the animal wants. So in negative punishment, the behavior again gets weaker, but it gets weaker because it re results in the removal or the prevention of something the animal does want, okay? So being grounded, uh, having your driver's license suspended, losing privileges like TV time or internet access or whatever, those would all be examples of negative punishment, right? And so again, those are the four basic types of operant conditioning. But remember, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, reinforcement always involves the behavior becoming stronger, right? Reinforcement always involves the behavior becoming more frequent, more likely to occur again. And punishment always involves the behavior becoming weaker. Punishment always involves the behavior becoming less likely to occur again. And guys, I'm making it a special point to mention that multiple times here, uh, it's important, an important point to remember here because one of the most common mistakes that people make with this stuff is that they confuse negative reinforcement with punishment. Okay. So for example, you know, a parent might say something like, God, you know, my, my, my kid's been saying all these swear words recently. I need them to stop doing that. Maybe I'll try negative reinforcement, <laughs> right? Well, that's incorrect. Negative reinforcement is still reinforcement, right? So if the parent were negatively reinforcing that swearing behavior, then that would mean that whenever the kids swore, the parent would be like, oh yeah? Well, guess what, Buster? No chores for you tonight, right? I'm subtracting those chores. It's a negative consequence, right? And obviously if swearing causes the removal like that of something the kid presumably doesn't want, like the chores, then it probably will get negatively reinforced. The kid probably will swear more often because of that consequence that this behavior produces, right? So that's not what the parent means. They don't mean negative reinforcement. What they really mean is they wanna punish the swearing behavior, either by following it with the addition of something the kid finds undesirable, right? Like more chores, for example, that would be positive punishment, or by making it so that when the kid swears, they get something they want subtracted, right? So for example, if you swear, I'm gonna take away your Xbox for the rest of the day, right? That would be negative punishment, right? Okay, so just to make sure that we're good on these four types of operant conditioning, what I'm gonna do here is uh, I've got a few videos lined up for you, okay? Each one includes an example of operant conditioning. So after I play each one, I'm gonna launch a poll for you guys and I'll have you identify whether you think it's an example of positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, or negative punishment. Okay, 
here is the first one. Spaghetti squash and bread, Smith's charred and bread, spaghetti squash and bomb bomb. Bom. Okay, so in that one, let me launch the poll here. But in that example, the guy's playing with his food, right? And his wife smacks him. And if he becomes less likely in the future to play with his food again, then what would we say has occurred? Would that be positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, or negative punishment? Okay, I'm going to share the results, and uh, most of you guys got it. The majority of the students got it got it right. It's positive punishment, right? So it's punishment because the behavior decreases, right? I told you that that behavior becomes less frequent because of this consequence. He's less likely to play with his food now, and it's positive punishment because the consequence involves the addition of something. It involved the addition of something he didn't want, getting smacked in the head. Right? So positive punishment for that one. Here's the next example. Oh, man. Now my head is killing me. Uh, it's an aspirin. Generic brand, aspirin. Wow, my head is gone. That aspirin really works. Okay, so let me launch this poll. So in that one, the guy's got a headache, right? Probably because his wife just smacked him. Uh, so he takes some aspirin. That's the behavior here, taking the aspirin, okay? And the consequence of that behavior is that his headache goes away. So if he becomes more likely in the future to take aspirin again when he has another headache, then what would we call that? Would we call that positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, or negative punishment? Okay, so guys, that one would be negative reinforcement, okay? You gotta think about what the consequence is. The consequence here involves the removal of something, right? The behavior is taking the aspirin, right? That's, that's the behavior, that's not the consequence. And the consequence of taking the aspirin is that his headache goes away, it gets subtracted, right? So it's reinforcement because the behavior of taking the aspirin becomes more frequent, right? He's more likely to do that now. And it's negative reinforcement because again, the consequence involved the removal, the subtraction of something he did not want, the headache, okay? So negative reinforcement for that one. Here's the next one. Come on, you got this, you got this, come on. Let's go Giants, come on baby, come on. Come on, yes, yes. Come on, he's got it. Come on. Does he have to play it so well? Not sure come on, come on, no, yes. Okay, so he's being really loud while he's watching the football game, right? Wife doesn't like that, so she unplugs the television. She takes away his ability to watch the football game, right? And so if he becomes less likely in the future to yell and scream and go nuts like that while he's watching football, then we'd say that what has occurred? Positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, or negative punishment? Yeah, very good. Negative punishment for that one, right? It's definitely punishment because he's becoming less likely to do something, right? That behavior, yelling at the TV, is now something he's less likely to do. So the behavior has definitely gotten punished. And in that case, it's gotten negatively punished because he's learned that when he does that, the consequence is that something he wants, watching the football game, gets taken away, it gets subtracted. So yeah, negative punishment for that one. Let's do one more. Thank you, baby. Just a little something for you. Go ahead and buy yourself something nice for tomorrow night when you cook dinner. Thank 
Thank you. Okay. So in that one, she brings him his dinner. And he's like, thank you, baby. No, go get yourself something nice. And he gives her some money. A pretty sexist example there, by the way. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, if that consequence of getting money makes her more likely to make him dinner again in the future, then we'd say that what has occurred? Would that be positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, or negative punishment? Okay, so yeah, positive reinforcement. Again, the behavior is increasing, right? She's now more likely to make him dinner, so that behavior has gotten reinforced, and it's gotten reinforced because it resulted in the addition of something good, the addition of something she would presumably want, like the money, okay? So that's why she's now more likely to do it again. So again, guys, with these four different types of operant conditioning, remember, just remember the reinforcement versus punishment part has to do with whether the behavior increases or decreases, right? Does it get stronger or weaker? And the positive versus negative part is about the consequence itself. Did that consequence involve the addition of something? or the removal, the subtraction of something, right? That's what the positive and negative parts are all about. Okay. Well, guys, before we move on here, one more thing that I should say about these types of operant conditioning is that they're not always completely independent of one another, okay? They're not mutually exclusive. Sometimes they can work together. So for example, when you study for an exam, your anxiety about the exam probably decreases. Right? I always felt less anxious just by studying for an exam, right? decreased anxiety. But studying also causes you to get a better score on the exam, right? more points on the exam. Now, both of those consequences are likely to reinforce your behavior. right? They're, they're both likely to make you more likely to study again in the future. But the decreased anxiety that you feel is a negative reinforcer. right? you presumably don't like feeling anxious. And the better grade that you get is a positive reinforcer. Right? Also, in other cases, one consequence of a behavior might tend to reinforce it and another one might tend to punish it. So for example, if my son sneaks a cookie from the cookie jar without asking first, and I yell at him for it, well, he's probably not gonna like me yelling at him, right? So the yelling would act as a positive punisher, but He's also getting attention from me, right? Which he might find reinforcing. I mean, maybe that's why he did it. Maybe he's sort of acting out to get a reaction from me. And he also, he gets the cookie, right? So that's definitely a positive reinforcer for the sneaky behavior that he has performed. So anyway, guys, the point is these distinctions that we're making here between these different types of operant conditioning, I'm not trying to imply that only one or the other is at work in any given case. Right? It's often possible to identify multiple consequences that a behavior can have. And obviously on an exam or a quiz, I'll be very clear, as clear as I possibly can be about what consequence I'm talking about so that you'll know whether it's an example of positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, or negative punishment. Okay, well, like I said before, I, all this stuff about reinforcement and punishment is probably review for you from intro. I imagine you guys talked about this in your intro. I hope you talked about this in your intro course. It's pretty basic stuff. Uh, but I wanted to make sure we were all clear on it uh, before we got any farther into operant conditioning. Now, during this unit of the course, we are going to focus primarily on the reinforcement side of things. Okay, but we'll come back to punishment during the next unit and focus on it for a while. Okay, well, that's a good place to stop this video lecture. So please do let me know if you have any questions and I hope you have a great day. Take care.